Good morning everybody, how you guys doing wherever you are? My name is Emmy. for everybody who's tuning in for the first time, I do weekly videos to bless you, to share information and to connect with everybody who is in the same journey like I am. I hope you're having a great day, it's a beautiful morning where I am. So how is your stress level? How are you doing? How are you managing it? We all have stress, don't we? because if you have a house and you gotta pay for it you gotta get up every day and go make a living right so the pressures of life we all have relationships the pressure to get along with our families with our friends the pressures to meet our obligations the pressures to grow the pressures of leadership the pressures of our dreams everywhere we go through a week we are under pressure so there is good stress and there is bad stress so good stress does this to you it expands you and prepares you for the next level of responsibility your growing muscle but bad, bad pressure can produce undesired results so what is in you we all have juices in us it's like this lemon there is juice in it. So no matter who is squeezing it, what will come out of this lemon is lemon juice. So just like us, no matter who is squeezing or what is squeezing us, what comes out of us is the same thing. So we all have the potential to be aggravated, to be hostile, to be rattled, or to be spiteful. And equally, we can respond to pressure in kindness, because we all have kindness in us, we can be accepting, we can be considerate, and we can be comforting. The difference is what we do with what is in us. So when you get angry, what do you do? Do you feel motivated to change? Or do you turn the anger on others or turn the suffering and anger towards yourself? What do you do? I don't know. So sometimes the pressures of life, the stresses of life, can get us to a wishful world. So we begin wishing things were different. We start mourning. We mourn a life, a past that we never had, which really doesn't make sense. So we begin wishing, oh, I wish things were different. You know, I wish I wasn't married to you because I'm married to you. I'm stuck with these children. I wish I didn't come to this country. I wish I wasn't born in this country. I wish I didn't move to this state. Wishing and wishing and wishing. So we are mourning what we never had. And wishing doesn't solve any problems. Wishing makes you stuck. Wishing clouds your perspective. And wishing produces more problems. When you talk about problems, you produce more problems. So if you want to talk when you, if you want to change, you talk about change and then you affect change. So, I don't know how you process, I hope how you process your emotions, but I hope by the end of this conversation, I'll be able to motivate you to give up your pain and to give up your suffering because it's not necessary. So you begin by seeing, you know, where you'd rather be and then change, start um, the change, you, you begin affecting change when you begin seeing where you'd rather be than where you are. So I believe there are some root causes to our suffering. And I thought of two things. One is the inability to accept our limitations as human beings. So thinking or hoping and wishing that we were perfect. So perfection is an illusion. When you don't see your limitations, then your missteps, poor choices, mistakes, and shortcomings will be so, so catastrophic to you. So you begin, because of your limitations, you can do this, cause suffering to yourself, or cause suffering to others. So accepting our limitations, you know, if you've had people say, I am an independent woman, or you've had people say, I'm a self-made, I'm a self-made man. You know, there's really nothing like that because God created us to be limited. And because of our limitations, we learn to be interdependent. And that's how we should be. 
you know we learn to depend on others we learn mutuality we learn to collaborate we learn to share power so when we accept our limitations we uh, give room for more peace within ourselves and with others I also think uh, another reason we cause suffering to ourselves when there is pressure everywhere is seeing life as black and white so the inability to see an alternative logic life is full of color I believe that there is all shades of red there is all shades of green life is not a multiple choice there isn't just one answer for anything there is all of the above and more so this weekend I was reading a column, a relationship column, and this woman had written to the editor and she wrote in distress because she said um, her husband had cheated on her and she was very sad and she said she knew why. The reason she gave was because she said, uh, I know why my husband cheated because I disconnected from him. So this woman with all her intelligence took responsibility for someone else's actions and started inflicting pain on herself. So really um, she started, she took responsibility and covered for the husband not to suffer. Or perhaps she saw more value in the husband than herself, which is pretty unfortunate. And I can understand perhaps she was going through betrayal trauma trail trauma is life altering event and when you're going through trauma some of you know you um, you can access some parts of your logic if this woman had seen an alternative thinking or had access an alternative logic perhaps she could have said oh perhaps maybe my husband cheated because he is selfish or maybe because he lacks discipline or maybe because he lacks self-regulation or perhaps he's chasing a feeling of approval from the opposite sex and that has nothing to do with her, right? So suffering is not spiritual, suffering is not courageous. I know people who are known as strong women because they suffer so much and that's not a good title. You know, it's not a good title. Do not measure your strength by your ability to withstand suffering. I believe there is no crown in heaven for people who suffer. Suffering for me is not spiritual. Joy, happiness, I believe is so godly. So give up your suffering. There are different and healthy ways to measure courage if you're trying to be courageous. Looking at yourself as you are and accepting who you are with your flaws, I think is a healthy courage, that's courageous. Accepting others as they are, I think is courageous. Walking to somebody and saying, I'm truly sorry for what I did, I think is a healthy courage. So I'd encourage you to learn healthy ways to be courageous and do not be loyal to suffering. I always say there is no trademark to problems. Problems are not, um, are not confined to one person. So do not take the crown to be the strong woman while you're suffering. So how do we move forward from all this? I say begin by asking what and how. When things happen to you, ask what and how instead of saying lessen the questions why and who. Because if you ask why, it's endless. It doesn't get you to solution making. And if you ask who, there's always people with character flaws everywhere you go. I think they move around a lot. So no matter where you go, you'll find people who are going to offend you. But if you ask what and how, it will propel you towards finding solutions to your problems and you can live more happily. So before I end this conversation, I'd like to ask you two questions. So is what you're doing getting you closer to what you want? Is it? And another question is, how would your life be different if you gave up your pain? Until next time, I'd like to thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support. May God bless you.